how do you think about mitochondrial health and how do you think people can really optimize that as well? Sure. So I talk about mitochondria being more than just the powerhouse of the cells, but I know that's what most people think of them as. But your mitochondria are the organelles in your cells that make energy for you. Without energy, you're not alive. The two organs that are the energy hogs are your brain and heart. And it's been, you know, in my estimation and readings that up to one third of the mass of your heart is made up of mitochondria. You know, you've seen EKGs in your life. You know, did you ever wonder why an EKG was actually ever, you know, what those lines were from? It's from the, you know, basically the electric and magnetic energy that's coming out of your mitochondria. So your heart is mostly mitochondria. If you have weak mitochondria, you're going to develop a cardiomyopathy, a weak heart, you know, either systolic where the heart doesn't squeeze well or diastolic where the heart doesn't relax well. And it actually takes more energy for the heart to relax than it does to squeeze. So you inherit your mitochondria only from your mother. So your mother is kind of your starting, you know, point to look at. You know, if your mom, your grandma on that side were really healthy, you're less likely to break down. But if your mom and her mom had heart disease early on, had cancers, had autoimmune conditions, all those are signs that they had weaker mitochondria that maybe that's what you started with. So it's mostly about thinking about your mitochondria's engines. You know, food is a fuel for that engine. Sometimes we all get stuck in the weeds of thinking like we got to put in all this super organic premium gas into our engines. Well, that's ideal. But if you have a really crappy engine, it doesn't matter how good the fuel is. You have to make the engine work better. And most of the things that make the engine work better is optimizing your sleep because that's when the mitochondria repair themselves. They do autophagy, which is kind of like doing the dishwasher at night and then you have clean dishes in the morning. Or they do apoptosis. This mitochondria engine shot, we got to build you a whole new engine. It takes a lot of energy to put in new engines into circulation. So sleep is mission critical, like if you want to have longevity, but how do you get the mitochondria to function properly? You really got to listen to your circadian biology. You know, there's a 24 hour cycle of how your hormones and neurotransmitters get made. It's mostly programmed by the light that enters your eyes and hits your skin, but also by the timing your nutrients come in. So your liver and gut really pay attention to the time that the nutrients come in. So I usually tell my patients, for the most part, you want to stop eating three to four hours before you go to sleep. So that your liver and gut know that it's nighttime and they flip into repair mode. You know, you're in Costa Rica. You have much more light stability. You know, your days are going to be more similar than mine, right? I got like four seasons. We're entering winter here in St. Louis. So the mitochondria are always sensing the light environments. It helps them determine how much energy they're going to produce. So focusing on your circadian biology, getting the proper sleep, those are the first signs. And then you can check in all these kind of fancy labs to figure out, is there anything that's poisoning the mitochondria? Uh, for fancy labs, would you look at like organic acids or what other kind of fancy labs would you think of? I would look at some of the organic acids, Price but you know, look at CoQ10 levels, look at oxidative right. stress, you know, inflammation, all those things are going to be damaging to the mitochondria. Yeah. CoQ10 is an interesting one. It's, I, I, I mean, were you taught to check CoQ10 levels in your patients in your fellowship for cardiology? No. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many how many physicians who give their patients statins, and I'm not saying that statins are a bad thing, like we talked about earlier, there are certainly people in whom they are indicated. And I think that that population is um, especially a population that can't or won't make lifestyle change. But um, I, I wonder how many physicians who are actually giving patients statins, which we know are going to inhibit the production of coenzyme Q10, are going to check the coenzyme Q10 levels in their patients. I mean, this is a critical component of the mitochondrial electron transport chain. Right. Um, when I've checked my CoQ10, it's been very high, uh, presumably because I eat lots of heart, yeah. you know, yeah. heart is super right. high in, in, in CoQ10 and muscle meat uh, mm -hmm. is pretty high in CoQ10 also. So yeah, I, I wish more people checked CoQ10. Um, 